Well, good evening to our Smyrna uh, church family. I want to thank you and uh, for all of your love and support. And when I do that, please know, uh, brothers and sisters, that I am not doing that out of some type of obligation or for flattery. You, you guys have are, are definitely demonstrating uh, your faithfulness to the Lord as you are proving to be faithful to the people whom the God, whom the Lord has connected you with there on Laura Copy. And thank you for your prayers for me. Uh, all of the encouraging words and texts that, that I receive, uh, I am so thankful uh, that the Lord has given me the privilege to serve you. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to continue our study. But before I do that, for those of you who are going to watch this before this coming weekend, uh, please remember Deacon Rice you get the family of Deacon Rice. Uh, you all are aware now that Deacon Rice uh, went to be with the Lord on this past week. Uh, you guys are fully familiar, even more so than I am, with his faithfulness to the Lord, his love uh, for his family, uh, and his his love for Smyrna Baptist Church. So please, please continue to pray for them. Reach out. Uh, to serve them. Let's really try to outdo one another in serving one another. Uh, so call Sister Rice, reach out to the family, and just love one her. Just, just love one her and encourage her in the faith. So uh, I, I know that from my time with you that you are going to, uh, you are, you are going to do that, and I thank you for that, for that service to your, to, to your brothers and sisters. God bless you for that. Uh, so now tonight we are going to continue our series of studies uh, of discussing how the Lord has provided for us everything we need for life and godliness in this world. And we have been addressing some what's called hot button issues. Um, so and with me tonight, I do have those same awesome three brothers with me, uh, Pastor Trevor. Calhoun is here with me, uh, with us. Uh, uh, elder to be Robert Gorman. Uh, and guys, by the way, uh, you heard Pastor Michael Vichy on this morning at, from Grace Hewitt. Well, that is the church where uh, elder to be Pastor Elder Vichy, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Robert Gorman will become a serving pastoral elder uh, pretty soon here at Grace Hewitt with Pastor Michael. Uh, matter of fact, he was the one who uh, the Lord used to, to connect us with Pastor Michael. And so uh, that's Robert Gorman. And you guys are learning and coming to love, I know, because he's such a lovable person. Uh, Brother Vincent Smith. Uh, <laughs> Brother Vincent Smith is here with us again. And so I'm going to share now my screen and uh, kind of introduce where we're going and we will jump uh, right in. We will jump right in. So. Okay. Uh, so today we're looking at the church. Uh, or believer, and we'll see why I include that there, and associations uh, such as the BLM organization, Black Lives Matter organization, political party, and patriotism. And again, it's just responding to the current confusion in the world. Uh, a particular passage that I, I want to, that I considered when I was, that came to mind when I was considering our topic is, uh, Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 uh, about how the who he, how he defined the disciples in the world. First, we see uh, where they were given to Jesus and notice the language from out of the world. There is a distinction that's made between them. Uh, in John 17, 6, I have manifested your name to the people whom, whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your words. So that idea, that in reference to these disciples particularly, uh, they were given to Jesus from out of the world. Uh, Jesus specifically prays for his own in the world. 
Uh, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world. Listen to these distinctions that are being made. But for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. In verse 9, and I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Uh, Jesus continues. Uh, Jesus gives them, uh, and they believe uh, God's word, and they are hated by the world. So I think it's, there's a significant distinction here uh, that those who are given to to Jesus by the Father, Jesus gives them the Father's word, uh, and of course they come to faith, and in light of that reality automatically because of their association with Jesus as belonging to him, they are hated by the world. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Notice they are distinct from the world. They are hated by the world. And that is in direct connection because of whom they belong to, who is also hated by the world, which whom him that that whom being Jesus himself. And they are set apart by God's truth and still notice sent into the world. Uh, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth as you sent me into the world. So I have sent them into the world. John 17. Uh, verses 17 through verse 18. So they are set apart by this truth that, that Christ has given unto them. And Christ doesn't pull them out of the world, no, but sends them into the world. Uh, and then we see where Jesus uh, asserts that they will be hated because of Jesus. So this is out of John 15, when which was the first part of this entire uh, uh, session of scripture. If you were of the world, the world would love its own because you are not of the world. But I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Uh, the believer now, a church in the world, we see similar language that's used that we belong to God. We are special people for God. However, we are still in the world uh, as his ambassadors, representatives. Uh, note, notice how Peter kind of defines us. God's purchased you to be used in the world for him. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. So notice that you see the same connotations in this language as we saw in Jesus's language for the disciples, that I chose you to belong to me, for me. But notice you are still in the world that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then we see 2 Corinthians 4 says, for God who said light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So we are in the world, called out by God from out of the world, and yet sent back in the world to proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his uh, marvelous light. Uh, so the world in which we are sent back into, uh, this world in which we live, uh, notice uh, is under the influence of the evil one. Uh, we know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. First John 5, 19. Uh, as unbelievers, uh, they operate according to now this satanic or evil one influence over the world. When Paul references who these new believers were uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, who they were before Christ, Notice some of the language he uses. And you were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you walked, once walked, and here's what you follow, following 
the course of the world following and I would suggest these are parallel phrases of uh, these participles uh, or following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air are almost congruent. Uh, they are functioning together as parallel statements to follow course of the world and to be following the prince of the power of the air. They are synonymous. If 1 John 5, 19 says that the whole world is under the sway of the evil one, then the course of the world is, is his system. It's, it's, it's his agenda that, that underlines everything that functions in the world and, his, and, 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 and its outwork, its lens, its worldview, its ethics, its morals, uh, what they what was determined as good, was determined as righteous, was called good, was called uh, unrighteous, was called us, uh, was called wicked. It, it, but it's their system that determines that. Uh, but that system is under the influence of the evil one, and unbelievers function according to that system, according to that world, according to the course of the world. And this evil one now who influences this world and this system within which unbelievers now operate and take their cadence, this evil one is in direct opposition to the gospel in this world. That system influenced by that evil one opposes the gospel of Christ. Paul makes this reference in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and re referencing uh, uh, unbelievers. He says, in their case, the God of this world, notice little g, we, so we know that's a reference to the evil one, has blinded the mind of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. So we see this evil one who influences the world and its system uh, and its course and, and its outworking. This evil one is in direct opposition to the gospel, which aligns with what Jesus told the disciples that you are going to be hated because of me, the world, if you were of the world, they would love you. But because you have been taken out of the world to represent me in the world, you will be hated. Why? Because the world system has been influenced over the evil one who is in direct opposition to the good news of Jesus the Christ. So in light of that, there are some organizations we want to uh Look at dominant world associations and ideology that's currently enticing believers. So here's one, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, and I just use this one because this is the hot button one right now. Uh, but it's social organizations with anti-gospel agenda. So brothers, uh, tell us, give us some information about what you know about this particular organization. Uh, and I put Ephesians five here, verses three through verse twelve. Uh, and to see if we can connect, connect it there, and then we'll move to the next, the next two. The floor is open. Jump in. Um. So I haven't done a lot of research of the organization Black Lives Matter. Um, <clears throat> I I've seen some things. I haven't verified. Um, some of the things that I guess organizational wise, um, I think the origin was kind of around the time of Michael Brown, the, the the killing of Michael Brown by a police officer um, in Ferguson, I think. Um, and I think when it comes to the organization and the statement, I, I think it's all been in, looped into one, if that makes any sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so now the fact that, of course, of course, Black Lives Matter, right? Um, of, of course, these sayings it it it's tr it holds the truth, but you know, for me and coming from a believer, when I see other believers um, associating themselves with really any organization, is now you're losing 
the strategic um, goal of the gospel because now you have been grouped in with an organization and for whatever they stand for. Right. And so I, I see a lot of believers <clears throat> will will talk about it, whether just using the saying, because some just say, hey, Black Lives Matter, which is absolutely 100% true, right? But some are part of the organization. And so I guess what does that do for us as believers when you are now looped in to things that that are, are worldly, anti-gospel, um, mm -hmm. and and then the, and then the fight for social and economic um, justice and equality. I think you now lose it from the aspect of as believers of what we should be doing. Mm. So um, I don't know. Well, if you go to the website, there are uh, a list where they lay out their agenda. Okay. Uh, there are a list of, of intentions that are directly contrary to to the gospel and to uh, what scripture says. So I'm gonna read this passage. Sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is, covet, who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. And let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, and, and, and by the way, you see that same phrase out of Ephesians 2, sons of disobedience, when he was talking about those who walk according to the course of this world. Uh, therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in our fruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. So, uh, I the the their this particular organization. You can go to their website and you can find um, multiple agendas, I would suggest, <clears throat> that contradicts this passage. So should, believe it, I'm with you, Rob, that we should need to make a distinction between what the title of the organization connotes, uh, the, you know, the, the truth behind, yes, Black Lives Matter, versus the, should Christians support and be involved with this organization and those so, like what so, hey. so let's try to narrow narrow down what we're saying by or what we mean by association or associating with because mm -hmm. I, I i don't want us to get um I, I don't want us to get bogged down with um with straining out the net because sure. in some ways we have fallen we've fallen prey to the smoke screen um, that in in large part was put up or was created by the um, the the evangelical um, nat strainers. If gotcha, you know. gotcha. Uh, because um, who who always want to debate Black Lives Matter as an organization um, when right. most Black people are not a part of the organization. Right. And I would say even less Christian blacks are a part of the organization. Okay. Um, but and, this, uh, and by the way, this is not the only one. There are others, right? Yeah, absolutely. True. There, there are yeah. others. So for, for most whites who, if they hear me say that black lives matter, want to talk to me about socialism or Marxism yeah. or um, or their agendas about the, the family. I, I just don't fall for that. You know, I, I just say, okay, let, let's just be intellectually honest here. You know, I'm talking about my son's life. There we go. Yes, sir. So don't don't throw up a smoke screen. Let's deal with whether or not you value my son's life or mine. Because I, I just think that most cases, 
um, when white Christians are wanting to continue to bring that up, that's just a smoke screen to cover up for the real issues. We know what we mean. And I right. think in most cases, they know what we mean. That's that's not that part is not hard. But I mean, uh, uh, <clears throat> for the sake of conscience, for the black, um, the, the African American believer or a believer of color, um, if I if I if I attend a rally, am I associating? If I hold up a BLM sign, am I associating? And not not necessarily. Right. Yeah, I, I would See, say I, not I, necessarily. I, I would agree with you. Not necessarily, but you you probably won't find me with a with a placard, a sign. Right. You probably won't fit, see me with a T-shirt, and I'm not probably not going to um, engage in one of their marches, um, <clears throat> because um, the appearances of it can be a stumbling block for some. There you go. That's what I was going to say. Romans 14, right? So for that reason, now, I, I don't. But I also don't think for the sake of conscience, if a young person attends a rally sponsored by them, that they're necessarily violating some, or, or, you know, necessarily violating something, their own conscience, if if you will, either. But I what do I, think what I need to be careful. What I really want to do is, is, I'm I'm on there. I'm, I've looked at the page, and I'm going to read it. Kind of read what they say, and if you. <clears throat> so, but but before you do that, Vince, my question is why? Because I think just well, because. Uh, okay, let me let me explain why. Because I would even say that what they say, with a, with the exception of a couple of things, there's nothing incongruent with a believer even becoming part of the organization. And I'm going to read what okay. they, based upon what they say, I'm just going to, okay. and I'm not trying to say it's, you still are free in conscience, but I just want to say, okay, when you look at what they say, is that counter, is it against something that a believer in Christ who happen to be African American or whatever, or even not just African American. If you are a Christian who happens to be white, if you're a Christian who happens to be Hispanic, whatever, when you read this, is it really is what it violates the word, basically? So if they say so Black Lives Matter is a global network foundation whose mission is to eradicate white supremacy and build local power to intervene in violence inflicted on black communities by the state and vigilantes. By combating and countering acts of violence, creating space for black imagination and innovation and centering black joy, we are winning immediate improvements in our lives, right? They say we are expansive. We are a collection of liberators who believe in an inclusive and spacious movement. We also believe that in order to win and bring as many people with us along the way, we must move beyond the narrow nationalism that is all too prevalent in black communities. We must ensure we are building a movement that brings all of us to the front. It says, well, now here, we affirm the lives of black, queer, and trans folks, disabled folks, undocumented folks, folks with records, women in all black lives along the gender spectrum, our network centers, those who have been marginalized within black liberation movements. We are working for a world where black lives are no longer systematically targeted for demise. We affirm our humanity, our contributions to this society, and our resilience in the face of deadly oppression. So is that contrary to the gospel? So, but yeah, but I will, I will kind of agree with Trevor too. I mean, I would say most, hopefully all believers would disagree with that and I think the statement itself is hijacked with the organization, if that makes sense. Now, he also touched on causing it being a stumbling block, which is one of the reasons why I don't use the term. This is, you know, I, I don't purposely because I don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody else and be associated with what you just read off, Vince, compared to the statement of believing my life and my kids and my wife's life matter. 
I mean, it, it's it's the obvious. It's, it's almost like with the whole all lives matter, right? The reason why I have a pet peeve with that is because that wasn't a thing until people start saying black lives matter. No one said all lives matter. No one said blue lives matter until somebody said black lives matter. So I think for, for us as believers, I think it'll be one thing for someone to be associated or be affiliated with the organization and their um, and what they believe, because that's contrary to the gospel that we believe. And also to to just fighting for equal rights for, for black lives. But again, because it's been hijacked, I think it's hard to kind of tell a difference from that. So, um, so I, I kind of understand yeah. what Trevor was saying. Yeah, you, 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 um, you, you, you think then what he read is is somehow contrary to the gospel? Yeah, I do. Yes, you heard that, Rob. Yes. Terrence, what do you think? Um. I think what he read is a it's a generalized uh, sound good but full of wicked intention statements. I, I yeah. really do. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, what was the last thing you said? I didn't hear it. Of wicked underlining wicked intention, wicked statements or a wicked agenda that contradicts uh, biblical truth. And here's why I say that. Um, because from my, because I have looked them up and I have studied and I have done some research on them, that they have, not just historically, since they've been around actually, um, but even continually, the removal of 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 gender they're not just talking about the value of life and so the language sounds like we're just talking about the value of life regardless of what someone believes their sexuality is or how they live and things of that nature but we're, we're saying we're finding that they are still valuable that agenda is a value is a value that's connected to um not just tolerance, but legitimacy. That the value validates the life, the lifestyle, the practice. And 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 the only reason why I, I, I well I say that because they demonstrated that. Secondly, uh, historically, we are seeing it now. Um, when. When, when, when the when that agenda was attached to the civil rights law and when it, once it was attached to the civil rights bill it became validated and it became norm not only norm it became right and good from a world from from a world's perspective from a lens of apart from scripture but but terence um ha hasn't from the world standard given the passages you've read mm -hmm. isn't from ha hasn't it always been affirmed from the world standard what what did what did it becoming attached to the bill change in that respect so from the world so from the world standard you're right it has always been but what this movement or now connected to this particular movement that doesn't begin directly with that agenda, but connects that agenda with the reality that, hey, in this country, we have a, 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 a race issue. And when I say a race issue, that we have a racism issue. And there has to be a call to say, hey, people of color matter. Black lives do matter. And now underneath that umbrella, just like it occurred underneath the discrimination, uh, civil rights, the civil rights bill, and that whole push toward the rights of people of color, this now comes in and it goes beyond that and it validates, it validates now something that we know is contrary to scripture. And so if we know that, right, if we know that, 
when it comes to the organization, not the, not what we know Black Lives Matter and the value of lives. We're not talking about the value of lives. Well, well, when we talk about Black Lives Matter, we are talking about the value of lives. But when we talk about these other groups of people, you're now connecting uh, immorality to it. What God clearly says is immoral. But that's the that now becomes a means to do what to validate and to now call right what God has said. It's not right. But let me let's so, so let me ask a question. I, 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 but, but Trevor, okay, did, did I answer? Did I, do you understand what, what I'm saying? Yeah, I I don't do. know how, if that was clear. Yeah, cool. So the question that I want to ask T and I guess Trevor and Robert. So I used for personally, I used to believe that just the term Black Lives Matter is what I affirm. And what I, I still believe that, right? But I heard someone say, the term doesn't mean Black Lives Matter only, right? It's not saying that, you know, Black Lives Matter only, it's means that back Black Lives Matter equally. And so, but, but now let me speak to something I'll say even broader than that. And that is, is it okay for, a, as a believer, if I'm joining an organization and let's say 80% of what that organization's part of their mission statement is not contrary to scripture, but let's say 10 or 20% is, and I say as a believer, okay, I'm going to join this particular organization, although I don't agree with everything that the organization stands for, and I will make that clear, doesn't that just become an issue of conscience? In other words, if I say, I believe that, you know, I'm work, I want to work for a world where black lives are no longer systematically targeted for demise, and I affirm, even though I don't agree with you know, the, the, the attacks against the quote on the nuclear family or whatever, is it wrong? Is, is, is it, would it just be a matter of conscience or is there something inherently, do I have to be 100% in agreement with everything that the organization says they stand for in order to participate in it? And I think, man, so when I read these, when I read certain texts and I understand the struggle and the strain um, and I want to say yes. I want to say conscious. I just struggle with, I, and I do, when I read passages about the distinctions that should be made with new believers. That's that's believers from the course of this world. Secondly, I struggle with, and in light of think, preparing for our conversation today, and th just thinking about not just this association, a, ho a whole lot of others that sometimes as believers we connect ourselves to and identify with and i'm gonna give you the other two uh that's that's right here right uh political parties patriotism mm -hmm. so this the other sides right um with this idea through these means this is what we need to become part of for there to be some type of effective change in society when we who are part of the only institution in existence where God has declared, my spirit is amongst you. You are my people in this world. You are the church. And yet we always seem to feel like we need to identify and join these other groups that were not born out of faith. They are not born, they are not developed out of, out of the gospel for the glory of God. And this is, that's his intent in the world. No, they are, they're completely and totally secular. They're completely and totally humanistic. And in many ways, completely and totally contrary to the gospel. So the same thing is true of organizations like Black Lives Matter, the same thing is true, like, you know, political parties and this idea of patriotism. It, so that so that's where that that would be my responsibility. So I'm sorry, let me let me hear. Let me say uh, say plainly what your what your answer is then. So, so my answer they, is they, I, so they shouldn't I, be. They should not I, associate. 
I was they can't do, they so, can't so, so, do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me, let me answer the question more clear. So as Vince said, then they can't join the organization and publicly disavow the parts that are not Christian. I think I think they the can. I'm, I'm not saying they can't do that. I just don't. I just don't know realistically when they will be able to do that. If I join um, whatever group I was to join, unless I work my way up through it, in some kind of way, I never get a platform directly to say, hey, I affirm this part of this group. I know you guys may have seen me participating at the rally or, or, or part of this and part of that, but I no, I'm, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I just hook up with them for this agenda. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm really when do you get the chance or the opportunity to to even do that right because if you're presenting yourself as a as a member of the body of christ with a hope in jesus and 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 you know and i'm here to represent him and to glory and I, when do i get the the opportunity to like clean up my testimony when somebody said, hey, man, I, I saw you, you know, you know. Well, you, you get the opportunity when the brother said, hey, I saw you. Yep. You, you do get that opportunity then. Would, wouldn't it be, I mean, T, wouldn't it be okay if you were out there and they ask you, man, what are you, you're out here with us, what do you think? And you say, well, yeah, I affirm that, you know, Black Lives Matter. I, I don't agree with everything that the organization stands for. But I agree that as black lives, we matter. So, and then they ask you, well, so you mean showing up at a rally. So you mean, to, so you don't mean as I'm joining the organization. It. Yeah, no, I'm talking about, let's say as an African-American joins a, a believer, wants to join the organization. I'm just, I'm, this is an example. And then in there, whatever it is the organization does, because one of the things to remember is that just marching alone doesn't really make a change, right? Marching alone, it was good for about two and a half months, right? We would look on the news and from like June 1st to maybe, I guess maybe even late as end of July, it was, pro it was protests all around the country. But if a change is going to be made on the societal level, it has to come legislatively. It has to come mm. through. No, I'm talking okay, about just on. A, I'm looking whole, at it just. Another argument there, man. No, no, mm. I'm saying that for a reason. I'm saying that for a reason. I'm not saying that that that's not the objective of the word. That's not the objective. The objective of scripture. But I'm saying if I, as a believer, say I want there to be certain change for Black lives. And because this particular organization is making certain changes legislatively, I'm going to join. My question is, is as long as I stand for the truth of scripture, would I be wrong for joining that organization? That's that's. Let, let, me, so, let me add my. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I think it is. I think the question. Um. Well, let, let me start a little bit. Um, I don't think the Christian faith should and can ever be reduced to um, shoulds and shouldn'ts um, without an understanding that life is not lived crossing a sin line or not. I just don't believe that. So here, here, here's what I'm saying. Um, in some cases, um, a believer can do it and it not be sin to them. Yep. Uh, and then there are other believers who do it and it could be sin to them. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and, I, and I'm talking in terms of sin because I can't find a better way to explain that. It, um, because, um, because God gives us as believers enough latitude not even latitude. That's the wrong word. I could tell Terrence got his ears pe uh, peaked when I said because <laughs> he he doesn't give us latitude to sin, but freedom. The word would be freedom. But, but he gives us mm. enough, he gives us enough freedom and room to grow into a place that's in line with what come becomes um, 
obvious pictures of maturity within the body. In, in other words, uh, some believers could still go to um, wh wherever they were going to get meat that was had mm -hmm. been offered to idols. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. But Paul would then teach, okay, for all of you who know better, show some grace to those who are struggling in this area. Sure. But then he would teach the ideal for where, where you would live with this thing after you have matured. Are you, you following me? So th sure. there can be some young Christians who are fired up and who really do stand for the gospel, mm. but who cannot sit idly by and watch black lives die in the streets who say, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to join this group who are doing something about it and it not be sin. And when they're asked, well, do you believe in these parts of the organization that are not in line with the gospel, they can then very clearly say, no, I don't, and stay a part of that group for that work. And God is not requiring them to come out from among them in that sense. Yep. In that sense. But let me finish, Tanner, because I can see I, I can see that the <laughs> is going up. Um, with 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 this caveat, right, that that we should be in our churches teaching the word of God in a way mm -hmm that when they are starting to hear the truth of scripture, it calls them out from among them. Here we go. Go ahead. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So what I don't I, I do, do, I do, what, what I do. What I don't do, Terrence, is I go out there and I grab that young Christian by the arm and say, what are you doing out yep. here? The Bible says right. you ain't supposed to be here. Come on out from among them in sort of a legalistic, less than heart and maturity and growth way of handling that. Wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Yeah, don't, we you, don't, bro. we don't mandate. Wholeheartedly, that. yeah, yeah. Wholeheartedly with you, and so, and and bringing all these other two together, right? With with, with organizations such as that, um, it sound when again, and, and so here is at least a. a my, a theological lens that I have, and I think we had some conversations some time ago, and I made a statement. I, I'm, I'm a slave to my theology. Uh, that when I consider those organizations, and not when I say not just that one again, I'm talking about how Christians are more Republican than Christian. They can tell you more about the Republican Party than they can about their Bibles. Right. Or they're more democratic than than they are Christian. They are political, you know, that's their allegiance first, and then some they are Christians. And even when it comes to the idea of the American Christian patriot and and all the other organizations that are associated with these, right? Um I struggle with how we number one, I think it's a theological issue for us. We say, well, that organization is doing good things for society. Now, I know that they have some fundamental, direct, and contradiction to the gospel of Jesus' beliefs. But because of these other good things they're doing, um, I will join their organization. I don't even mean just participate in a rally. I don't mean just just march, you know, because they have started this march and they call into communities to come out and for this cause. It's one thing for me to support that cause and to join and identify with this organization. Um, so, but, but, when, but when believers feel as though I need to join the organization because that organization is kind of the answer that's, that's the, this voice, I'm suggesting that the only organization in the world that has the power to bring about change in the world is the church. It is the church. And so I agree with you, Trevor, for the young believer or the impact that's doing that. No, we don't judge him. No, we don't beat him up. No, but we should be, as you said, training and teaching. So they recognize that you are the light of the world. It is not that organization. You, you are the light. Of the world, the churches that light in darkness, not that organization, not of your political party, not just your country. You, you are the only 
body of people where God says, I dwell among you. Yeah. And yet we lean or we feel like so that but that's, that's my that's a maturity, but, that's a maturity issue. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm not going to join. I'm not going to I'm not going to even go out and be a part of the protest because I do believe that is a maturity issue because I believe that I believe the answer to everything in the world is 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 the church. I think that's what we're in it for. Yeah, um, right. We're left in it. But um, but this becomes not just an issue of maturity, but it becomes an issue of what the how, how the church projects itself when we want them to come out from among them but mm. we haven't trained or taught them so that their heart understands their God, their father's call and their father's purpose for their existence as a part of the body of Christ and simply mandate you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, to say they shouldn't when they don't understand who they are in Christ and all those yeah. things that you just said in some ways will damage the young believer because he gets into his thinking that my church is saying I shouldn't, although yeah. my heart says I should, and now they don't quite understand the call of their father from what their heart says they should be, and that's just that's just that's just living by law. That's just that's just the legal. And, and I think and I think part of that struggle, along with what you just said, Trevor, is the fact is when God's people are not responding as light. Right. And, and that's where my struggle has always been with the church. And I lay that responsibility right at the feet of those who are charged with pastoring and teaching the people of God that they don't know any better. Mm. Now, I, mm. I, but I do think there should be a distinction between the pastor who goes out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And joins the group and leads his people out there. We got different story than Vince. I'm over yeah. here the yeah. arm and say, brother, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then there's also a, a difference between the brother who goes out there, joins the group, says, I'm not a part of, I, I don't, I don't espouse this part of the organization. There's a difference between him and the guy who says, I am a Republican. I'm a conservative Christian. Come on, man. Yeah, man. Right. And who is espousing that part of republicanism yep. or Democrat, yeah, man. the, the Democratic yeah, Party's man. platform that's antithetical to the gospel? Right? Where, that, where, that where, where let is, me just add this this one, and where, as, as Trevor just said, and where almost to the point where Republican or conservative, from a political standpoint, means the not, same thing as evangelist. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Well, that's that word. Eve. That's the whole world. The word evangelical. evangelical. They even yeah. said I was reading are that there was this clip that Trevor, uh, you that you shared on, on um on Facebook that that there's this really good explanation of why mm -hmm. why most white evangelicals vote Republican and why most uh, black Protestants vote Democratic. And the thing he said, he said it was interesting when he tried to describe. Blacks, he said, I can't even use the word evangelical because that word mm. almost is synonymous now Man. with being a white conservative Christian. So mm. now you hear the word evangelical, which is the word evangelism. So now there's this there's this tight association. Now, now, now let me see. Here's the thing. I, I guess I want to bring out and, and that I'm sharing is I. And here's the thing. I I wouldn't join the Black Lives Matter organization, right? That's a, but I think where I'm getting is to the point where I'm realizing though, there's been a lot of bondage. <laughs> there's that verse, you know, it says all, Paul said, I think he said it twice, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. And in even in that that uh, the account in Acts 15, you know, when the, the the individuals, the men from Judea, came down and taught taught the believers at Antioch, you have to be circumcised in order to be saved. And the big contention arose, of course. And then Paul goes up to Jerusalem, and James and Peter, and finally, and Peter makes a statement. You know, basically, it, it we we don't need to lay any greater burden on 
you than the Holy Spirit has placed upon us. And he lists these things that if you keep re uh, refrain from fruit, food that will strangle and sexual immorality, he says, you will do well. Well, the issue is there's a whole lot more as you mature in God that I'll say when I say God requires, there's a whole lot more than just those those specific things that Peter listed. But based upon where that church was, based upon that was the, the let's say the minimum burden that would that would require them to 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 as as the Lord moved through them to to cause them to grow. I'm just saying I think sometimes. And in, in, in my zeal, I have said, you can't be a part of this organization because of this, 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 when like it's really an issue of conscience. It's not it's it's not an issue of it's at that point. It's an issue. Of Parents conscience. don't like you saying that. Vince. It is an issue. of conscience. And, 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 and here's why. It is. The only reason why I struggle and, and, I, and, I, and I'm with you on issue of conscience. But I think I'm I'm a, I'm gonna lean back on what my brother Trevor said. It's a uh, immature conscience. Yes. Well, look, and, and so let me add, let me just add this real quick. So, 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 so here and here's my push too, because I want to include this passage, because we acting like this passage ain't in front of us, where you have a young church. The church in Corinth is not that old. By the time Paul writes the second letter, he's not writing to thirty year believers. Uh, you know, these churches still fairly young. Some suggest maybe about five or six years old. If that old, if it, you know, depending on which letter this is. Nevertheless, we know that it's probably also a response to the false teachers that was amongst them. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Uh, but look at the language. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what accord, what accord has Christ with Belial? What portion of the believers share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? We are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, God from the midst of them. And then he gives a command, be separate. And, and you know, don't. Notice God's reasoning for telling these believers to not partner up, yoke up with, have fellowship with people you know are ungodly. His only reason was because I am among you. So T is voting Democratic, yoking up with the Democratic Party? Is voting Ooh. Republican? Is that yoking up with the Republican Party? Is, see, that's I thought what, we already now, talk about voting. <laughs> no, no. I'm so. In other words, I'm asking: if we look at this passage, does that mean if I vote for a particular party, does that mean I'm unequally yoking together with unbelievers? Now, now, hold on. Let me let's let's, let's look at the question. Look at the question. Uh, is, this is where this is where we get so bogged down, right? That we. We, what we amount to is doing almost nothing but arguing about the things that Magic. really in the end don't matter. So then if, then if that's true, uh, now, now we're going to, now we're going to, we're going to whittle this thing down to the gnat. We got to get him out of the wine. We're going to strain out our wine for a gnat. And we're going to say, so does voting democratic mean I am, I am, unequally yoked then with an unbeliever mm. right and what we are afraid of when we ask those kinds of questions is how far then do i it how far can i slide how slippery yeah. is my slope to the point where i do what sin so here here's my point vince it doesn't even matter mm -hmm. I don't even think it matters. Some things are pretty clear. When there's an elephant yep. in the room, we know the elephant, mm -hmm. right? So if, a, if if I get a believer on the street and he is he is a he is a trumper, he is a trumper. <laughs> he's blowing the trumpet. I got a trumper. <laughs> you, you, you see what I mean? He's got on the t-shirt. Yeah. He's got on the hat. When you oh, interview yeah. going him, to the every, rallies, everything he says is in support, right? 
then then I, I, I then then his pastor ought to be able to say, brother, come on, let, let's let's go to Bible study. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's let's look at what the scripture says. Right? Because clearly he has yoked himself to unbelievers yeah. in a yeah. way that's not healthy. Yeah. Right? He's identifying himself with a group or with a person. Yeah. Right? But I don't have to I don't have to draw the line anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then if a person then one day has on a MAGA hat, but he's very quiet about his life, do, do, do I then have to do that then have to call him out about it? To me, mm -hmm. probably not. Right? No, it, not any more than when I wear a Nike hat, because I don't know what Nike really stands for. <laughs> right, right. Right. You, you get my point. Mm, but right. the great thing about our God is I don't have to be those people send police. Right. That's good. Right. I, I, that, you know, I've got a God who knows hearts. Why do I got to call these folks out? Right. Now, some things are clear, brother. That's yeah. an right. elephant. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And, and we'll call out the elephant in the room. Right. 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 And, and, and here's where I 100% concur and agree with Terrence and, and, and you, Trevor, and that is if now the church, the leadership is going to say we need to become a part of Black Lives Matter when the direction of the ministry, because obviously that's not that is not the established purpose of the church. We are the called out ones. We are the ecclesia. And, and so our objective is what the Lord lays clearly in, in scripture. So as the church, right, a church cannot become secularly focused at the same time. I believe that the member of the church is, is the freedom of their conscience. If I say, but, if so, I say. So, but, so my only pushback, V, in white light, whereas when we say the church, we're talking about the members that make it up, that we are who we are because of the people whom God has saved and brought together. And, and, and so I'm just, just using in this local assembly and says, okay, we are the church. We are the local church on Laura Coppice, Smyrna Baptist Church. Well, when you, we're, not, we're talking about the people that come there, the individual members per se, that come and make up this body. So when I leave Smyrna, I'm still, I'm still Smyrna in that regard. Mm -hmm. So, so let me tell you how it's here, here's how I think it's supposed to look biblically, and I think it will help us in this respect. So, if a if a Christian, um, if he's Christian, he should be connected to the body of Christ at some local as, uh, assembly, definitely a, a local gathering, so that if I see the brother who I know sits on my pew in my church, if I see him out in the world and I see him becoming a, a Biden devotee, mm. you mm. know, just, this is just to balance things out. He's a Biden devotee, right? And he's out there and he is fully engaged in the, the, the clear support for and a part of the democratic network mm. to elect Biden and he and you see his passion for it, then as a member of the ch the church, I go and I say, you may not be representing our Christ well right now. Mm. And mm. then and I said, OK, bro. And he was like, well, no, I am determined to get this brother. OK, then how about you and I go have a cup of coffee and we talk about what what role we should be playing as the member of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the mature helping the immature. And then the and expectation go ahead. should be the, the expectation should be that um that a pastor somewhere, a pastor teacher somewhere should be um preaching the word with with, with great patience and instruction so that we all uh mature for the work of service so that we all mature we become mature together that's an that's a huge assumption in our culture right rob that that kind of thing is happening so that a christian 
are to be a are to be connect. Um, um, there's there not be enough mature believers out there who go and they make sure that our young zealous Christians who are probably not living the passage Terrence got has up here who just very gently not legally right, right li gently you know it brother saying gent restore him gently right yeah. we, we bring yeah. them back into the fold where our God dwells and remind and, them of our high calling in Christ Jesus that no we can't go get back in the muck and mire of American political activity. Yeah, it's, it's a world, regardless of what we have may have been trained to believe or told to believe, American politics, American, America as a nation is not God's ultimate agenda. Absolutely. Absolutely. Say that again, absolutely. It, it is not God's ultimate goal to make America the greatest nation to ever exist, which will always exist. But a lot uh, of folks believe it. And that's what I'm saying. So I'm not talking about the, so Vince, I'm not talking about when, you know, people going in and voting. I'm talking about when we connect with and those associations, we connect with them and we identify with them. And yeah, that's the key word. We, we are identifying and their worldview to some degree, whether we agree with all of it or some of it, but we take on that identity, some of their lenses and their identity. When God keep telling us, no, I have given you your identity. As a matter of fact, our entire reason for being remaining on the planet is so that we can present to the world an eternal perspective, an eternal identity that's completely different and in opposition <laughs> to the world system. Whether that's American, whether that's politics, whether that's uh, many of these secular movements that they are convinced, you know, it's convinced it's for a good cause, it's for a good cause. How can it ultimately, let me ask I'm asking this question. When we consider these things, how can it ultimately end in bib in true good if ultimately it's all influenced by the evil one and it's outside of the intent of the gospel? Well, I think America is a is a I think we are an example of that futility. Yeah. Of, of trying to do that. You know, we could we 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 could probably have a whole nother week, Terrence. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not, I'm not yeah. asking for, but we could have a whole nother week on why the church in America still struggles with that and and blending its patriotism. That that now the the problem with it is, and the reason why so many people think so, and making a distinction between their patriotism, which always leads to their politics, uh, and their faith, is. I mean, it's steeped in in some of the thinkings of church leaders when this country was founded. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was founded mm -hmm. by many church leaders who thought this was this would be God's city on a hill. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was in the whole idea. Listen to the words. This is this is American history. It's in the ideal of manifest destiny. Yeah. Um, that's that's still that's that has not been um rooted out of the american church's thinking by diversity because diversity would have done this for us mm. that 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 um that the founders of this country didn't have a manifest destiny to to bring civilization to this to this continent that that yeah. that was not somehow a work of God that they were ordained to do. God mm. was not in the founding of America. God, has, he was in the mm. founding of the church. Mm. And, hey man, be careful, be careful with that statement, brother. No, I, I mean, I was, <laughs> no, I was I'm messing with you, but I'm telling I know you. you are, but but the, the, the people of God need to hear that in this country, 
Man. God is not an American. God has only God has only shown favor to one nation on planet Earth, mm. and it's Israel. Mm. Mm. But just look at the and, and that's another thing. <laughs> that's another thing with our American culture is that we we because of that truth with Israel, we align ourselves with it as if as if that's enough. Yes, or yeah. something. I couldn't even. Yeah, like yeah. Hey, we're good with Israel. Well, That's God's people. We're God's people. We're good. Well, just just look at the look at the quote unquote patriotic songs we sing. America, America, God shed His grace on thee. Right. Then you go to uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance Pledge to allegiance. the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Right. So there's this almost this belief that it was the Lord's divine uh, dec decreed and and just he said America is mine almost and it, it adds this layer of quote godliness to the nation that's not has hasn't been there since it's a uh, there is no such thing as a Christian nation. I mean, because I've heard, you know, people say oh, America's a Christian nation. Well, what is a Christian nation? The only nation, mm -hmm. quote unquote, that's Christian is in First Peter 2, 9. That's the church, right? Well, we're, mm -hmm. we're a holy nation. Mm -hmm. We're a royal priesthood. Yeah, we're, man. You know, that's the, the yeah. nation is not geographical. It's not, well, it's not even, you know, it's not ethnic. It's, it's, it's the living body of Christ, the organism throughout the world. But but you, like I say, you do hear that this is a Christian nation. Well, it's a Christian nation until it infringes on our freedom mm. of, of people, right? Um, so when we when we start when we start uh, looking at for what's biblical and for what we want to do politically, and we can't match it up then we we people start adjusting of you know to make it okay for one thing that's not not the other and, but rob that's rob that's why it's never been a christian nation because right. it has always infringed <laughs> it has all it has a history rooted in the, the you know the oppression of other people right because the kingdom is not a democracy no, no it's not it's it has very little to do with us and there's a kingdom that's liberty and brings freedom and joy. Right. And but we have a king. And he yeah. runs everything. And we have yeah. we have a we have a king that, that watch this that doesn't have checks and balances. Nope. Right. No, no, no. By the people well, he that, says go. Let's not get voted by the people either. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> we so, I, 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 so I put two um Two texts here, two big ideas for for believers here. Because right. um, I know our time is running out, and Brother Vince already gave us his schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we want to respect his time too. Uh, uh, so, believers, should this be our mantra as believers? We are citizens of another kingdom. Yep. Um, Ephesians two, and Pastor Michael shared this passage today and talking about how these different groups have been come have been brought together in christ uh you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god talking to people who formerly were not built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets christ jesus himself being a cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the lord in whom you're also being built together into a dwelling place for god by the spirit uh, Philippians 3, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and then notice believers are singly focused on an eternal kingdom agenda. Then you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds. Things that are above, not on things on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So if this is our citizenship into this eternal kingdom with Christ, and 
this is what we are waiting for. Believers singly focus on this eternal kingdom. So all of our affections are looking towards that. Uh, wouldn't that suggest that uh, we don't have a lot of time to be hooking up with a whole lot of other folk? <laughs> Is this not who we are? You brothers can have some final words and somebody pray for us. I think I've used up all my words, Terrence. <laughs> There's no more left. Yeah, the only thing I'll say or just add is, um, and I have to be reminded, uh, I remind myself of this passage, you know, especially in light of the culture and where we are right now, is John 18, 36. And it was when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And he said, because if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. <laughs> so if in other words, it's not, it's nothing like the king, it's, it's not fighting, it's not you know, it's not this 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 faction versus that faction is is his kingdom is just is completely other. And we are mm. ultimately that is the kingdom that we have been we have been baptized into and called out of everything that has to do just in terms of the 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 agenda, the 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 bent of this world so so yeah i just and i you know like i said when i however you know, motivated i might be about something that's earthly i just have to always by by god's grace remind myself lord this is this is not our home and this is not your kingdom amen and this and i always think about john 17 in light of that we are members of this eternal kingdom but he's left us here to represent that kingdom in this world. Yep. To represent that kingdom in this world. Rob, you have any other words you'd like to share? No, man, I'm good. Just soaking it up, <laughs> man. Meditating on some things, and um, you know, I, I like the just the the passage and uh, the points you made here at the end. Um, and I think if if more believers will have this mindset. And I think even, was it Second Peter? Yeah. First, yeah, Second Peter, that mindset of, of belonging to a new race, you know, uh, a new nation um, that's rooted in Christ. I think if we would have that mindset, I think I think things would just be a lot better for us. And, and again, that's not saying you can't vote for who you want to vote for. You, you, right. can't, you can't, watch this, you can't vote for the person who you think is going to be the best for this country mm -hmm. but i think terrence you said it best on a post that i made you just can't you can't make it christian <laughs> we, yep. we can't yeah. make everything christian don't right? try to make your vote christian yeah you, in christian terms vote. you know you know we, we use right. republican and democrats conservative liberals right left you know i think those words need to be handled careful as believers me personally yes. because i yes. think it causes people to stumble when we start calling people these names um, these political names and because we're identifying with this party. So, yeah, I would just say, man, I, I just pray that we would, we will have this, this kingdom mindset. Man. man. And what's even worse with that, Rob, I would suggest is not only do we attack one another based on those labels, when we attach the evangel. The evangelical, the, 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 the evangelism and the evangel to it, the good news of Jesus to our worldly governmental system, we're really in trouble. When this party represents Jesus and that one doesn't in any way, we're really in trouble because neither one of them represents Jesus. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them. Neither one. Man, brothers, thank you so much. Uh, Trevor, I think we, we, we can talk about it a little bit later, but I think I want to take you up on that offer or else to do one more around uh, that history and how the church, uh, and I mean the church collectively uh, in our country uh, and where we are when we 
think about um, our country, the history, and what we have done in the American church uh, in, 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 in lieu of being in, in America, what has occurred in America when it comes to that. I, I really would like to do that. Uh, if, you, if you brothers would like to join that, uh, you guys, what you think? I, uh, I think it may be necessary. Okay. Okay, so let's let's plan for that. Um, uh, thank you, Smyrna. Uh, thank you for participating, for watching, for serving, for your love, for your support. Thank you for all the feedback that we've received from these videos. I thank these brothers again for their love for the Lord and their love, uh, their love for me. I'm glad they like me a little bit. But they're willing to spend their Sunday evenings to do that. Uh, but we, I, oh, we're, toler we're tolerating you, Terrence. That's how it goes. <laughs> we're, we're, we're tolerating with our brother. No, you know we got love for you. Nothing but love. <laughs> so see, so thank you. I give you the chance to bear with me. I give you the opportunity to live off scripture. Praise the Lord. <laughs> got nothing but love for you, Terrence. Let me stop. <laughs> well, and thank you, Smyrna, for uh, again for everything. Remember the Rice family. Continue to be praying for them. Um, uh, continue to uh, reach out to serve them, and Lord willing, we will see you on the next Lord's Day. Uh, Smyrna, you guys have a wonderful and blessed night. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. And I will stop recording.